All right, I think we're on live. I got a I got a microphone problem. I was supposed to plug in my microphone and I didn't do it. So the microphone sounds all buzzed out like I'm yelling all the time, even though I'm not yelling all the time. Blame it on the microphone. And so the microphone's messed up because it makes me sound hostile, makes me sound as if I'm yelling when I'm not yelling. Sometimes I'm just talking, I'm just saying stuff. Hey everybody, my name is Michael Bunker. Welcome to the Bunker Nation show. I'm gonna be your host for the evening. I'm here with Mrs. Bunker. Hi. She's over there and she uh, says hi. And we are here for you. Hello, Pat. Hello, Daniel. Wherever you guys are, wherever hey, anybody is, anywhere in the world, make sure you hit the like button. Come in here, type into the comment section, wherever you are, to say, I'm in Saskatchewan. I'm in wherever you are. Hello, Dana. We know hi, you're Dana. in Missouri, probably. I don't want to assume. In the county of Houston. In the county of Houston. I think that's probably that could be right. Hello, Frank, down the way here hi, in Texas. Frank. Y'all come on in and say hi. Oh my gosh, this hair. It's hot, but it's not bad. Uh, I don't know what the temperature was today. We can take a look real quick. We'll see. I would imagine, I'm going to say 96. We think 96 or 97. Nice it's like 92 now. I don't know what it got up today. But uh, it's uh, humid is the issue. That's the issue. That's the mainest point. All right. Colleen from Mayburg, Pennsylvania. Where's Mayburg? I may, Mayburg have been there. I've been in a lot of Pennsylvania. Audio and video oh, are great. Texas County. I don't know why I was thinking it was Houston. That's right, Texas County. There's a Houston County up there, too, though. Oh, okay. All right, everybody, come on in, say hi. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I got a couple of topics in mind. Number one, about a week or so ago, I got on Facebook and all my social media, and I said, send in your questions, send in your, your Q&A, any questions you want to ask. I didn't write them down, <laughs> but I know a bunch of them in my head. And so I figured, you know, if we got time, I'll answer a couple of frequently asked questions. You could also, while you're here, since you have a captive audience, as you could type into the comment section, any question you want to ask that's reasonable, and we might answer it. Forest County, Mayburg, Pennsylvania. All right. Well. Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. It's I, a good place to be. Yeah. The city's that crazy. can't be because you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, come on in. Like I said, say hi. Make sure you hit the like button wherever you are. If you're in uh, the YouTubes, make sure you're subscribed. I'm here with Mrs. Bunker, and people always tell me when she is on the show that the show's is she's yawning. Sorry. <laughs> I was the one. I was up late, but I woke up at 3.45, 3.50. You do that all the time, though. But it was late, but I still was. But I haven't. I mean, I only slept a little while in the hammock since then. Well, see, you got a nap, too. I didn't yeah. sleep in that hammock. That's crazy. Hammocks are awesome. So if you have a question for Mrs. Bunker, uh, everybody says that I'm happier and I'm more uh, um, personable, less curmudgeonly when she's on the show. So we're here for you. But um, so 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 we'll kind of dip into the Q&A's while we're waiting for your Q&A's live. Um, OK, the number one question I get now. After my um, body transformation and uh, fitness quest is i thought you were plain why are you not plain anymore and this question can come from a couple of different places i try not to judge people's motives but sometimes you can't help it there are some people who are um gleeful somehow they feel like i have fallen away from something that they believe about something they think that i believe that uh, isn't true and so I have gotten anything from very kind questions through a private message to uh, very unkind questions on social media. Don't yawn anymore. We're on TV. <laughs> Some of the kinder questions. Hey, thank you, Dana, for the super chat. Very, very kind. We appreciate it. That's how we get to keep doing this. Um, so the kind questions have been like, hey, man, I'm just curious. I was wondering you know, I used to watch you all the time and you were wearing Amish clothes, it seemed like. And and I thought all of that was part of your religion. 
and now you're not dressed uh, that way anymore. And so I was wondering what happened. And then the unkind ones go along the lines of, hey, what? You're not a Christian anymore? I thought that's how you got to heaven. And so I tried to ignore the a-holes who ask questions in that uh, vein. Uh, here's the answer, um, and, I, and, and there's, there are some facets to it. And Mrs. Bunker, uh, uh, just chime in whenever you want. Anything you want to say is fine. So first of all, our plain clothing, which we wore for 15 years and still in, in, in many ways do wear and as, as much as we are able, um, was never, ever something that we thought made us acceptable to God or in any ways uh, was designed as a, um, uh, a salvific type of, um, I don't know what you would call it, a law. It was never a law, ever. Uh, how it first developed was when we first moved here to Central Texas, we were part of a Christian community, and we all wanted to live more simply, closer to the land. In part, uh, 95 degrees in Montana, that's pretty hot. Uh, and part of that was uh, our desire to make our own clothing, to uh, live cheaply and simply. And part of it was the biblical invocation to dress modestly. We did not define modestly as Amish or as the way that we dress, but we did have a lot of meetings and talks, and we decided that one of the best things to do as part of the community was to not be in competition, to not spend a lot of money, to dry, dry, uh, dress as simply as possible. But we also wanted to associate ourselves with ourselves so that we felt more like a uh, and more uniform as far as the community goes. We wanted to be joined together. We wanted people to see us as an entity, as a part of the body of Christ. Never, ever, ever was it designed to please God or to make God think that you know we were working our way to heaven. It was never legalistic in any sense. Nor was the manner or means or the style that we chose ever any type of imposition on anybody. Uh, in order to become part of the community, you had to decide on your own freely whether or not you wanted to be part of the community. And whenever we changed the ordinance, which is the rules of the community concerning things like dress, we required 100% uh, acceptance. If one person didn't want to do it, we didn't do it. And that maintained for uh, 12 years until we got a pair of yahoos uh, in the community running the place. And they just decided to start making rules on their own, whether or not anybody else disagreed or agreed with it or not. And that's when we left sometime after that. So we never looked at our dress as if it was some, um, like, I don't know what you want to call it. It was not a least legalistic way of pleasing God. It was, we, we believed that we needed to dress modestly and we believed this was a way to be shown. To be. So that is over. That's part of our life is over. Uh, we're not part of that community anymore. We still dress plainly. We still dress to everything you see me wearing is uh, this is a one dollar t-shirt we got at the thrift store now the second part i don't let you talk yeah I me mean, for me what it was is coming to the realization that i spent a lot of time and a lot and wasted a lot of time spent money and wasted a lot of money on the idea that you have to look cute that you this you know, you got to wear this or you got to wear that and, and kind of thing. Not and in the community before that. Me personally, I kind of came to the realization that I was spending way too much time out of my day picking out what I was going to wear and whether I looked cute and all of that. And the closer that I, the Lord pulled me, the more I realized that it didn't really matter. It didn't really matter. What mattered is... um me keeping my focus on the Lord and taking the focus off myself and whether I cared, whether anybody thought I looked cute. And so when we moved out here, the number one thing I did is um, that's when I started wearing dresses all the time. I, I left all the pants and shorts at home because I thought, you know, that that's, that's what I personally was, was felt led to do for me and my family. Well, then sometime before we got the, 
uniform uh, throughout the community where I decided to start wearing white t-shirts and jumpers just to kind of just get rid of everything, get rid of the prints, get rid of just all of it. And so Not the singer prints. No, the print, you know, the floral prints, the, you know, all right. of that stuff that it was basically kind of like it's de-accessorizing yourself. It wasn't just, you know, getting rid of the jewelry, getting rid of the makeup, but making everything plain and simple. And, um, so then when the idea of the, the clothes change came along, I was, I was all for it because if you're honest with yourself and you're a woman, you spend a lot of your day thinking about that. And I kind of just didn't want to think about it anymore because I needed to think about living in community and kind of setting the right example, you know, of just kind of not really going, oh, don't, isn't this cute? Don't I look cute? You know, and kind of thing. And so that's why it was easy for me mm. to embrace. Right. And now that we're not, I still just kind of either do solid shirts or jumpers. And it's just, it's what I feel comfortable in. I, I don't feel like I need to accessorize and stuff. And, I, you know, and I'm thankful the Lord led me down that path because it can only be him. Right. That led me down that path. And, and, you know, not having that big fight against your flesh. So so long as we were all in agreement, everybody was doing it for the right reasons. We wanted to, our clothing to be cheap to make or cheap to procure. We did not want to spend a lot of time trying to be fancy, trying to compete, trying to, you know. And, and at the same time, we wanted to feel like a unified whole. And, uh, and, you know, the scripture says not be decked out in a costly array and all that. So it was just a combination of things. When, when the fellowship went into a hard, uh, I would consider not just legalism, but bullying, where instead of requiring an absolute 100% everybody agrees or we don't do something, they uh, two guys started just making rules, um, then that was the beginning of the end for us. And it was not something that we ever wanted was to have some autocrats uh, just deciding that because they read the Bible a certain way, we were going to start doing things the way that they wanted to do them. And so um, th that's the first thing. We still never changed our mind that we ought to dress modestly and, uh, and as inexpensively as possible and not wasting, not to, to shun, not to be gaudy and, I well, think, we wanted to worship according to what was in the Bible and not according to uh, some leader that was elected by men um, or by who's, himself who's, <laughs> you know, deciding that, oh, this is what the Bible says to him. So this is what he's going to teach us. You right. know, we are going to let the Lord teach us. And, and so the, and the thing was, is, um, you know, we still believe the same things we believe then. We're not part of the community anymore, so being unified in the in the means or whatever the the the, the style is, we're not doing. At that was in 2017, and then I continued to dress plainly, just because that was the clothes I had, and I, it was always plain. But I continued to wear the same clothes because that's the clothes I had, and I didn't want to go out and spend money on new clothes. I went out and uh, before we went to Hollywood last year at this time and got a suit an Amish suit that was $18. So that was the extent of my wardrobe change from 1917, excuse me, 2017 until late 2019. When 2020 rolled around is when I started my fitness quest and lost over 100 pounds. Well, when you lose 100 pounds, there's a lot of things that happen that most people will never know and never experience in their life. And it's really weird. It's a strange experience and it was a short amount of time. But the strangest thing is, is that you cannot keep up with clothing. Danielle and I would go out and get some clothes at the thrift store. And with a week, within a week, I could not wear them. They were unwearable because I was losing weight that fast and we couldn't keep up with it. So I finally said, you know what, I'm just going to get whatever cheap stuff, cheap t-shirts, cheap undershirts, cheap uh, workout pants I can find. And that's what I'm going to wear until my whole body transformation is over. And it's, it's ongoing. And so there today, we, we got a box out and I put probably 20 or 30 shirts in this box that I'll probably never wear again. 
And there's stuff that I've gotten since March. So um, there's a combination of several things going on. We left the community in 2017. And uh, although our beliefs have not changed and our understanding of what, how we ought to comport ourselves has not changed, some of the realities did change. We're not part of a community that's trying to look um, uni uniform, uni unified by their dress. We're not a part of that community anymore. Uh, and at the same time, we're not walking around half naked. We're not walking around in uh, tight shorts and flip-flops and bikini tops and whatnot because we don't believe that that's the way that we should comport ourselves. So that's the answer. The people who are really curious, I appreciate your curiosity and I appreciate you being kind about it. People who are being a-holes about it because of their whatever nuttiness they imagine in their head, you know, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so that's the number one question that I get most of the time. The second question, second most popular question I get all the time is, am I like this all the time? They want to ask Mrs. Bunker, how in the world do you deal with this guy if he's like this all the time? So that's the question I get all the time. I don't know why people ask me, so here she is. <laughs> no, you can ask like her. This all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would scare me away. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Well, see, you're yelling. <laughs> I'm not yelling. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm not yelling at all. I'm just saying I don't know what that means. I don't know. Like that, I'd be like, "Don't you need to go down to the office?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if you're at the cottage. Hello, Scott. Hello, everybody. Come on in, say hi. Type into the comment section. Ask questions. Most of the other questions I got were things like, um, "Are you ever going to go back to uh, filming outdoor adventures or doing things or cooking stuff outside?" Yes, I plan on doing all. I got all those type of plans. My problems going back to March have been technological ones. So even today, we're using this fan. Can you feel that fan? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the only battery we have. So we're not going to have a fan tonight. <laughs> you can turn it off. And you I'm out of it. here. That's the one that you were going to use anyway. Uh, and so we're not going to have a fan. We have a little technology problem, but I, I, I found something today. I was uh, out there fiddling around in the solar trailer. And one of the wires that comes from the solar panels into the inverter, no, the charge controller had, I don't know if one of the cows pulled it out, which is very likely, or if it just uh, got pulled out some other way. Some squirrel was doing parkour. Uh, but I got it fixed, and then the, the, the solar battery started charging a little bit. Well, not enough to charge any batteries yet. We'll find out tomorrow if we have a sunny day whether or not I – the word fixed is very loosely used because those batteries have been dead for five years. So if I get anything out of them, it's just a benefit. But that's pretty much most of the questions I got. I have a second part of stuff that I was going to do on rules of social media, but I did want to give you guys time to uh, ask any questions. Ah, do any water. See, there's some water over there. I didn't bring any water now. Nope. Oh, well. You'll make it. So this could be a very short show if, if nobody participates. I got my Kayla Ray hat on. Kayla, if you're out there, I'm wearing your hat. It's my supportive artist. And by the way, my friend, Garrett uh, Bradford, he may be watching this too. Uh, Garrett has a song that's going to come out on the Yellowstone TV series with Kevin Costner this next week. And I saw it today they were filming a video for it. So <clears throat> you guys look up Garrett Bradford, go to Spotify, look up Garrett Bradford, you know, uh, whatever you do on Spotify. I don't know nothing about it, but like bookmark it or like it or heart it or something, <laughs> whatever you're supposed to do on Spotify. I like it when I can just go and like I find out about somebody like Garrett and I go, hey, how do I get your album? That was the old days. Like, how do I get your album? Well, I've got a single available on Spotify. Yeah, but how do I get your album? I want an album of music. You know, a record. I want to put it on my record player. So, anyways, if you're watching Yellowstone, and I am, 
I guess it's on either this episode that's coming out tomorrow, tomorrow, or the next one. <clears throat> and one of those episodes, Garrett Bradford song, gonna be on there. So you guys go check them out. All right, <clears throat> I'm not getting any questions, or I'm not seeing any questions. Just means this show is gonna be very, very short. All right, so the second thing, and I put a post about this on Facebook. How to use social media. I want to help you all. This is part of my How to Think series. All right? Social media is a very interesting thing because it is a way of communicating and participating in society in which there are unwritten rules that you ought to know so that you behave yourself properly and you don't. Hey, Forbes. He said, hi, Danielle. Hi, Forbes. What's with uh, light in the background? Kind of distracting. I usually keep it on blue. I told you. They're going to watch that instead of you. And uh, I keep it on blue so it's not distracting. And she said, uh, well, what's going to happen if people are distracted by it? It's only going to be the low information people that are uh, low operating that are going to be distracted by a light. Who, distra- who was distracted by it? Oh. Daniel. So if you're a low operating person and you can't have a light. Don't take uh, that from him, Daniel. I made it where it will stop flipping through all the colors. It's just going to stay blue. Uh, so where was I? Okay, so if you understand the rules of social media, you won't walk through life as a jackhole. You'll actually be a <laughs> you'll actually be a friendly, kind person who other people want to be around. Here's how you are supposed to look at social media, whether it's Twitter, whether it's the Instagrams, whatever it is. All of these uh, social medias have one thing in common. They give you a place to post publicly the things that you think, the things that you think that are interesting, the things that you think are exciting, the things that you want to share. That is usually called your wall or your um, uh, your wall, something like that. All right? That's the places where you get to talk about what you want to talk about. You get to control who's in that room. You can kick people out. You can block people. You can do all that. That's your room. It's a little room in your house. So you have your house and there's a little room and it's called the Facebook room. And you walk in that room and you I say, I want to talk about cat videos. And you post a, uh, a cat video. I don't know what Daniel's, oh, Daniel's question was. The light is not distracting unless you're low operating. I told you. I told you you're distracting. Don't. I like it. It's right in front of my face. All right. You guys are getting distracting because you're distracting me from the topic at hand. So you have this room on your house. It's called the Facebook room. You walk in your Facebook room. You're like, I want to talk about cat videos. Anybody that wants to can choose. They have, this is the only place in the in life where you actually have free will. You can choose to participate. You can choose to look at it. You can choose not to. If you're walking by my house and you see me in a room and I'm in there and I'm doing what I'm doing right now, and you go, I don't like that guy. Guess what? You could unfriend me. You can unsubscribe. You can you can go do whatever you want to do. You could come in and start uh, stirring up trouble in my comment section and get blocked. All kinds of things can happen, but that's what that place is for, and that's how you do it, right? There's a whole other part of Facebook, and that is there's another room that you can go into in your house, and when you walk in that room, you're, it's not your wall. It's everybody else's wall that you choose to see. So I see Danielle's post, and I see Frank's post, and I see Daniel's post, and I see Forrest's post. Whoever I want to see, I see their stuff. And I can choose to participate in the way that I want to, but I have to remember, when I see Forbes' comment go by, I'm in his house. And so if I make a comment, he can kick me out, he can block me, he can do all those things. See how that works? When you're in my house, you behave yourself, and I can leave you in there, I can kick you out or whatever. When I'm in your house, I have to behave myself because you can kick me out or whatever. There's a third room. Get this. Isn't this exciting? Isn't this exciting? There's a third room, and it's called private messaging. Private messaging is neither my wall nor your wall. Private messaging is my telephone. You used to have them on the wall, and they were hung up there with a cord. That's how you directly contact somebody who is a friend of yours on social media. Some places call it direct messaging. Some people call it private messaging, whatever it's called in the particular format. That is a very sacred thing. If somebody has your phone number, you, you trust them. 
You trust them not to call you at two o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I think this thing is really important. Share this and make. If in 1979, I called your house and I said, hey, this is really important. Jimmy Carter is a alien and they have to keep him in a freezer with the ice cream or else he turns into a reptilian. Share this with all your friends. Call everybody else at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell them what I just told you because it's so important. I would beat your ass if you did that to me. Don't do that to people. You don't call people at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell them to share something. That's what your wall is for. Now, if you think Jimmy Carter is a reptilian, then you walk into the little room in your house, which is your wall, and you go... I think Jimmy Carter is a reptilian. They have to keep him in a freezer with the push pops or else he'll thaw out and become a reptilian. And then people could think you're crazy and they can leave or whatever they want to do. But when you call them and they have to answer the phone and then you go through all your stupid stuff, now you've become a jackhole. Now you get blocked and people have hard feelings because you're misusing the platform. So every one of you that's listening to this, and those of you who are from the future times, you are going to watch this video on YouTube later, stop doing that because it makes you a jackhole. And I don't like you if you do that. 40 people in the last two days have sent me videos saying, hey, (laughs) this is important. This is important to me. You know, and some things are important. Hannah, he'll take that as a challenge. Yeah. (laughs) Some things are important. But they're not important enough that I need 1,500 people sending them to me in private, right? I think it's very, very important that we have uh, very likely perverts in power. But that doesn't mean I need 1,500 people. Ping. And every time somebody sends me a private message, my phone goes off. I get a ping. This is a very intrusive thing. You, are, you, you have been uh, honored with the, the sacred right to be able to contact me and say something privately like, hey, I liked your book, or hey, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you cook water, or whatever it is. <laughs> That's a sacred uh, uh, responsibility. And you don't just call people up and say, hey, I think Jimmy Carter's a reptilian. I think he stays down in an ice cream all day. Don't do that anymore. So the way social media works and what I want you to learn out of all of this is learn the different parts of when I'm talking on your wall, that's your house, I should behave myself and I should have respect for your property and go by your rules. When you're on my wall, when you're in my format, when you're in my platform, they're my rules and you should behave yourself and be respectful, right? Exactly. That's it. So don't do that anymore. I hoping, I'm hoping, I I hoping there's like eight or 10 of you right now who just learned this for the first time and you're going to contact me. You're going to get down in the comment section on YouTube and you're going to go, thank you for telling me that. Thank you. Even if it's your own wall, you should be nice. You know, after I posted that, that, um, wait, what are you saying? I'm telling them that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you already know he's not. Um, I'm very respectful until people get crossways. Just hear you, a holes. Bunch of jack holes. Um, <laughs> so after I posted that on Facebook, the same guy. Should I say his name? Scott no. Joseph, whoever the hell you are. I don't know who you are. Sent me two more videos. After I post it. So he's, here's the thing. Here's the fun thing. He's not even looking at what I post. He doesn't give one damn about me. He doesn't care one thing about me. He's bypassing my private room so he can call me personally so he can send me videos. Guess what, Scott? You got blocked. Hope you're watching this on YouTube. <laughs> you are now blocked. Now the day's going to come, maybe soon, when the uh, world's going to start going to hell in a handbasket. And you're going to go, I got a question for Michael Bunker. Eh, 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 eh. Sorry, you're blocked, Scott Joseph. You don't get to call me anymore. Everybody else, if you got a question or comment, I'm here for you. 
said, I said one time that Jimmy was a reptilian once, and you won't show that. Even if I had hard, hard evidence in my car, but you were like, nah, bro, Applebee's calling the line. Hey, the hard evidence in your car, man. You can't bring push pops as evidence that Jimmy Carter's a reptilian. <laughs> I'm fun, but I'm way more fun when Danielle's home. You have no idea the pressure I'm Thank under. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you have no idea the pre pressure I'm under when I'm sitting next to her. <laughs> I have to guard myself. I have to not say bad words. So, all right. If you guys got questions or comments, get in here. Put your comments and your questions in because I'm done. I've, I've, that's all the content I have for my little room as part of my house, of which you are all guests. Hey, everybody. I'm supposed to say hi to future people. They even put up a little um, thing for content creators. They go, make sure you greet the future people. They don't call them future people. They call the people who are going to be watching your video later. I don't. That's my light I bought and spent money on so they would illuminate my sign. They say on the YouTubes, the how-to YouTubes. I know. They say. A big flower up in the house. They say putting a light back there gives depth to your. Not you. No, to your. I don't need any more depth. If I got any, if I got any depth there. I would be calls bad cabins. All right. If you guys got questions or comments and you want to talk about, get them in now, because if not, we're going to cut this off. Oh my gosh. You can't be on the show anymore. <laughs> now it looks like a candle. No, it doesn't. It looks like my head's <laughs> over a nuclear reactor. <laughs> Purple, blue, is that blue? Purple, red. That's the blue, blue I like. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all got anything you want to talk about? You got any questions? You got comments? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's changing. <laughs> uh, we're going to give you guys five minutes to type in a question or comment, or we're out of here. <laughs> we're going to split like a leaf. What? We're going we're gonna, like, we're gonna, to we're gonna act like a tree, and we're going to shake ourselves out of here. <laughs> calls for a white light you gave me COVID <laughs> she gave me oh, I'm not supposed to say that on the show they automatically demonetize me hey I got one other thing I want to talk or about ACQ. I'm getting um, tons of people that are talking about too many commercials when you're the future people and you're watching this um, on YouTube I got a solution for you it's coming out real soon called clean vid you can find it in the description the word is in the description but it'll eventually become a link and you will be able to block all the commercials but don't tell you to you'll be able to do it like that i already have Did it on my hannah? i have yes hannah uh i have it on my computer and i don't get any uh commercials but until then until then watch them because that's how they pay me. I make dollars a month doing this, people. I'm a professional. All right. I'm not seeing any questions. You guys, we appreciate you being here. Lord willing, I'll be back. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I don't know. But I love you all one way or another. And uh, <laughs> Just don't send him any messages. <laughs> don't send me private messages about Jimmy Carter paid, being a reptilian. Commercials then. How do you get paid for commercials if you block them? I won't. You won't. I won't get paid for commercials if you block them. But you will enjoy it better, and I'll feel better about it. Or, or I'll get a sponsorship. <laughs> One way or another. All right. God bless you all. See you. See you soon. Maybe say thank you to Mrs. Bunker, and she's uh, for now. Next time we'll let her talk more. Ah, the blue light. That's fine. <laughs>